Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in our talks with Walt as we are calling our readings through the deathbed edition of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. We turn now to a little poem, Weave in My Hearty Life. Uh, this one is poem number 13 of the 22 of From Noon to Starry Night. Um, I love the fact that Whitman will reach back into ancient literary um, texts and he will draw on those texts. For example, Go back to our study of the Odyssey at LearnStrong.net. You'll remember we've given full lectures on every book of the Odyssey. And you'll remember that we made the observation so much of the Odyssey, true as well of the Iliad to be fair, but more the Odyssey. So much is about this motif of weaving. The idea that, notice, Penelope is going to put off the suitors by constantly weaving and then, of course, undoing in the evening. We've got weaving going on all the way through that text, as, as, as of course, the, the Iliad. And this motif, then, for Whitman becomes the means whereby, A, he's going to write his poetry, that is to say, to weave, and now all of a sudden, leaves of grass and weaving can come together. But also, America itself is a product of weaving. Now, um, you'll remember in Song of Myself 15, he says, I weave the song of myself. And so we're going to come back to this here. It's a wonderful echo. Now, our assumption is that you've been following our stuff at LearnStrong.net, down that left-hand side, Talks with Waldar Playlist, and that you've been with us from the very beginning of our conversations together. And of course, as we did Song of Myself, a passage like 15, I weave the song of myself. Now we'll come back to it. Now, I've given a set of introductory comments to um, a Noon to Starry Night, this cluster. I'm hopeful that you have uh, exposed yourself to that as well as to mediums of the poem that we just finished with. Now, our Nortons will tell us that this poem um, uh, was a drum taps poem of 1865 and then 67. It was transferred in 1871 to the group Marches Now the War is Over and to the present cluster in 1881. There were minor verbal changes in Leaves of Grass 1871 and, and uh, 1881 only. Now, let's enjoy this poem, Weave in My Hearty Life. By the way, notice that technically that's not the first line of this poem. This this poem will have 12 times the word weave gets used, so obviously all kinds of, uh, uh, all kinds of uh, echoes going on here. You'll also remember, um, from starting from Pominach, um, uh, I, from Pominach starting I fly, um, I'll weave, the, you'll remember this, um, I'll weave the cord and twain in. So this idea of weaving or bringing together. Notice he says it this way, weave in, weave in my hearty life. Weave yet a soldier strong and full for great companion, uh, campaigns to come. Weave in red blood. Weave sinews in like ropes the senses sight weave in. Weave lasting sure. Weave day and night the weft, the warp. Incessant weave, tired not. We know not what the use, O life, nor know the aim, the end, nor really ought we know. But know the work, the need goes on, and shall go on. The death-enveloped march of peace, as well as war, goes on. For great campaigns of peace, the same, the wiry threads to weave. We know not why or what, yet weave, forever weave. Notice he begins with the pronoun my, hearty life, and he ends with we. Do you see this? It's, it's uh, we, we, we know not why. So, it's, it's a brilliant little poem because it works at both the individual level as well as obviously the collective level. Now, the word hardy will take us back to uh, Song of the Redwood Tree. You'll remember his use of that word, hardy, strong. Weave in, weave in my hardy life. Weave yet a soldier, understanding why this one in drum taps is, is easily correlative. St uh, strong and full for great cam campaigns to come. In other words, we're weaving, preparing for something to come. Now, no question. Um, weaving has been a part in Leaves of Grass of the flag, the symbol, obviously, of America. And so we're playing that game as well. Weave in red blood. Weave sinews in like ropes. You'll remember the sinews used from Song of Myself 37. The senses, sight, weave in. In other words, it's going to be inclusive. This weaving is going to bring us all together. Weave lasting sure. In other words, the, the, whatever it is that, we are, that we're weaving or constructing, it's going to be something that will last. Weave day and night, obviously from noon to starry night, uh, will, will help here. The weft, the warp, that is to say the mechanism whereby we weave, uh, go back to think of time seven to see uh, this, this game getting played there. 
incessant weed. 16 times in Leaves of Grass, incessant um, will be used. And you will remember in Our Poverties that we'll play that game of incessant war. I think he's reaching back to that set of lines two poems ago. Incessant weave, tire not. In other words, weaving can be fatiguing work, but it is worthwhile work will be his argument. Don't get tired, don't get tired of it. And then in parenthetics, we get this, and we've seen this so many times in Leaves of Grass, we get this, we know not. And you'll remember this, we know not, from starting from Pominark 10, passage 10. This fallible is position epistemologically, as we have said in our Big Five. That is to say, we don't really know exactly why we are constructing as we are constructing, and yet we know we, we know it's important. We know not what the use of life, o me, o life, obviously comes to, to comes to mind here. Nor know the aim, the end. You'll remember in o me, o life, it's that we may contribute a verse. Nor really ought we know. In other words, this is the nature of weaving. He says especially cultural weaving. We don't really know what the tapestry is going to look like in the end, but we know that weaving is happening. But know the work, and again, this takes us back to the previous poem, Mediums, with makers and finders being that work. The work, the need goes on and shall go on. The death envelope march, and again, that's just pure right um, um, language from drum taps, right? Death um, uh, enveloped march of peace as well as war goes on. And you'll remember this, uh, I, just, I just quoted that, but to go back to it for a moment with the Ah Poverty's line, you'll, uh, you'll maybe remember this when he says, uh, Ah Poverty's wincings and sulky retreats, Ah you foes that in conflict have overcome me, for what is my life or any man's life but a conflict with foes? the old, the incessant war. And you'll remember this when we were messing around with Open Road, Song of the Open Road, understanding well it's providing the essence of things that from any fruition of success, a greater struggle is necessary. So he's playing this game of the work has to continue and go on because it is the march of not just peace, but uh, war as well. In other words, they're symbiotic, they go together. For great campaigns of peace, the same, the wiry, threads to weave. It's an interesting idea. In other words, it's just as much fighting to gain peace as it is to gain war, right? And, uh, and so you've got, you've got this need for this weaving to happen. We know not why or what, yet weave forever. Weave. The repetitions are powerful in this poem. I love this little poem because it speaks to the work of creating a cultural fabric. It requires Everybody being engaged in this weaving activity. That is to say at 2A, the American quilt or tapestry is incessant weaving. It's ongoing. And it's as much a fight as any other battle or fight in American history. At 2B, I love the repetition of weaving 12 times. I want to take us at 3A to Anna Quindlen's classic essay, Quilt of a Country. I've given a full lecture on it at LearnStrong.net. You'll remember that September the 26, 2001, right after 9-11. That brilliant essay that borrows heavily from the ideas of de Tocqueville's democracy in America, that 1835 offering, which obviously is going to take us very close to Leaves of Grass in the 1855 original publishing date. The idea of the melting pot, the idea that we're all kind of in this project of weaving it together. Quendlin's essay is brilliant in her construction of what it means to have this conundrum, as she calls it, this amazing conundrum called America. Finally, in 3B, how are we going to possess or own a poem or a set of lines like this? Well, I could challenge you to answer, do you think that America is still weaving? Are we, in fact, engaging in the activity of weaving? Or are we more like Penelope now at the, in the evening to put off the suitors undoing whatever weaving has been done? I'll leave that word picture to you to think about it. And then at the personal level, if your life is a tapestry or a quilt, then to what degree has your life been woven? And all of the different strands that bring it together, and to what degree is Leaves of Grass helping for that weaving to take place? I hope a number of threads. Thank you.